Um, Cybergreen has been uh, developing a groundbreaking work on applying the public health um, approach or um, public health paradigm to decrease the area for vulnerabilities and weakness within the national and regional networks. Um, Cybergreen is conducting a project with the area um, to develop cross comparable statistics in cyber hygiene and cyber ecosystem health across the um, its member state in Asia, um, East Asia. Um, sorry, ASEAN um, region. The um, this framework, the Internet Infrastructure Health Metrics Framework, um, is a set of models and metrics to measure the public health of internet infrastructure. Um, I will present about our past research and development efforts and would like to discuss how we can build a safer and more resilient internet for all um, with the science of cyber public health. Next slide, please. So, um, we're talking about cyber public health. What is public health? And what is cyber public health? Public health is a social or global efforts to identify and analyze the health risk factors to the population level in order to increase the society level of health. So it's not the doctor and in individual relationship, it's medicine. But on the other hand, the public health is about population level, society level of health, and understand and identify a common risk factors. Similarly, in cyberspace, we believe that adopting three public health approaches can improve the risk resiliency um, of the ecosystem and revolutionize in the cyber, um, cyber security practices. Next slide, please. So um, that was the um, public health and cyber public health. The foundation of the public health is a data, it's vital data. Surprisingly in cyber, we currently don't collect on, um, we don't have a shared metrics and data on massive scale of cyber incident breaches and myriad of risks um, risk factors within the internet. Because of this, we cannot evaluate the effectiveness of cybersecurity measures, um, predict future outcomes, and tangle the wider set of reasons behind the risks, how and when attacks occur, and what impact these attacks have. Um, in my previous work before becoming um, CyberGreen, before I started CyberGreen, I was working at Japanese CERT Computer Emergency Response Team. And CERT writes adv advisories and reports, but it was 20 years ago. But that time, we were trained not to use the numbers because it's never the right numbers and then it's misleading and it's just opinions. But at the same time, policymakers and decision makers demands the measurement and numbers. How are we doing compared with other countries? And often I saw using the numbers works powerfully in that conversation. So that's one of the reasons we started Cyber Green Institute. Next slide, please. One of the most important conditions for enabling robust cooperation in cybersecurity, cyberspace, is the av availability of the cross comparable statistics that empower decision makers to set policies based on evidence, establish priorities, and view trends. Cyber Green focus on raising um, ecosystem resiliency developing a set of models and cross comparable metrics to measure the internet ecosystem health. Next slide. So um, the, as we all know, internet is vast and complicated and infinitely interconnected. But our view of is 
extensive set of interrelated and interconnected risks is very narrow and woefully incomplete. We believe addressing our shared risks may be the most efficient path to dramatic improvements in cybersecurity. So with area's support um, as a proof of concept of this vision, we developed IIHMF, which is Internet Infrastructure Health Metrics Framework in 2020. This is a set of models and metrics method to measure the internet infrastructure um, critical components health. So we started scoring the public health level of DNS, routing, and open services. These are the three critical components that we chose to start scoring. And this year, um, we're going to add email security, certificates, and security protocols and services. And we measure um, 250 countries and including countries and territories, um, area um, uh, domains, and measure how those countries are operating their um, critical infra network infrastructure, um, critical components and protocols safely and health, um, health way, healthy way. So that's what we're doing. Um, our scoring methodology and algorithm technical paper is available, um, but we are now conducting validation work next couple of months because we started measuring this um, score last, um, last year, November. So with the um, uh, five months score data, um, we're going to use the you know, methodology and the data and the score are all um, needs to be validated. So we're, on, we're under that um, work process. So after that, we plan to publish the paper. But if you are interested, um, please let me know or please reach out to area. We're happy to share that for your review and would love to hear your validation um, review and opinions, input, critics, all for um, improvement. Next slide, please. A new perspective. So why cyber public health? Why we took public health? Medical professionals in the dawn of 19th century faced outbreaks of infectious diseases, such as cordyla and smallpox. Using data-driven solutions, those early pioneers of public health revolutionized treatment and focuses on the mitigation of infectious diseases. They started looking at underlying issues causing the disease and not just treating individuals that were already affected. Um, you might well know um, Dr. John Snow, the father of the epidemiology. He started a population level of analysis, not just curing the you know, individuals and identified by doing that population level analysis, he identified the cause of the chorela was the polluted water. So, um, Public health, this data-driven approach is very, very powerful that the cybersecurity we do not have. Um, other much more recent experience we had, we all had, was COVID-19 pandemic. One of the core lessons um, of the public health model is that we learned that an individual has very little control over the risks we face or they face. Our individual health is interconnected with the shared health of our community. And it's a very similar, um, similar thing in a cyberspace. We need to adopt a public health approach to cybersecurity by collecting and analyzing data on a massive scale, creating preventative approaches to shared risks and developing a healthier, more resilient and robust internet ecosystem for our global community. Next slide, please. So this is our approach to establish a science of cyber public health. There's no science at the moment. We are creating, we are attempt to develop the science of cyber public health in next um, decade. This is our approach. 
Science starts with data. So our top priority is gathering a more comprehensive set of data and standardizing it for researchers. We also think that we need institutions at every level of government, international NGOs, academic institutions, and private organization to support a mature science of cyber public health. Next slide. So this is a change of mindset and perspectives about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity was about, still now, is about protecting you, protecting me, protecting us against the rest of the world. Um, but cyber public health calls for um, society level, population level of attention. Public health requires public-private partnership. It requires every layers of stakeholders to involve. Our metrics specialized um, special advisor, Don Gear says, common good at that level only follows common efforts. And I love this word. Um, it also encourage, um, encourages international collaboration rather than competition and drawing borders between allies and adversaries. Collecting risks only address by the collective approaches. Collect, collective risks only addressed by the collective approaches to mitigation. We started telling the stories and called for the collaboration at variety of forums last decades and started seeing a momentum. A regional organization such as AREA, APNIC, European Commissions, um, Policy making and international building initiative, such as UNGGE, Paris Call, um, many places are calling robust metrics and evidential data. Next slide, please. So, in um, ASEAN region, this is a statement um, of the area's President Nakajima at the G20. Digitalization in the G20 economies shall promote development for all. So cyberspace and its risks, risk factors are connected across national borders. So in promoting digital transformation in ASEAN, it is very important to simult simultaneously also promote improvements in the resiliency of the cyber ecosystem at a regional level. CyberGreen is supporting the establishment of the Center, um, of, uh, Center for Digital Innovation and Sustainable Economy within area by providing cyber public health statistics, focusing um, systemic risks measurement and following the concept, um, following the concept of the public health. Area share the vision with us about regional collective risk reduction approach. As we have experienced recently with the COVID-19 pandemic, public health approach promote international collaboration and collective approach to the shared collective risks. Cyber public health model also ensure a coordinated efforts throughout the ASEAN region without stimulating geopolitical tensions or competition among the nations. Um, I have served as a chair of the AP CERT, Asia Pacific Computer Emergency Response Team for four years. This is uh, again about 15 years ago. Based on my experience, I think this philosophy and approach works great in this region. So um, next slide. Just like um, life expectancy um, statistics, CyberGreen's IIHMF, and the scoring mechanism is useful in understanding the key symptoms of the poor health in networks, the risk indicators that cause poor internet health, and in how countries score relative to others. Um, for area, this framework is being used as a tool to determine the baseline of the internet health and to create benchmarks for countries in region that would benefit from enhancing access to capacity building, as well as a secure and sustainable digital infrastructure development programs. These analysis will facilitate the rapid expansion of capacity, build expertise, 
and provide data to assess the effectiveness of mitigation approaches. The cyber public health model encourages um, public-private partnership, um, collaboration at the regional level, and collective approaches to mitigation. So from the next slide, I am going to speak about um, what's the um, sort of the function of the um, capability that we are developing and we're trying to develop. So um, first, the data collection and metrics development. Um, it is common when you go to the conference, um, like RSA conference or you know uh, regional conference, you are asked about. So, is the you know um, cybersecurity the threat is increasing or is this getting safer? Um, we really do not know. Um, but it's common. Um, I'm sorry. So we should contrast this with the public health where the cause of death are collected and published by credible entities. Many of these statistics are expressed relative to various populations. And these population statistics are called vital statistics. Few vital statistics are available in cybersecurity, unfortunately. But we do not know. So we do not know how many computers are running in the country. We know how many are sold, licensed, or connecting to various services, um, which are all not the same. Without that, we cannot measure the incidence or prevalence of problems. And this limits our ability to assess um, if interventions are effective. So we don't have those type of data to do the science. We should start a work in vital statistics for cybersecurity, including measuring populations, defining analogs of mo um, uh, morbidity and mortality would be also useful. There are many scientific challenges in internet measurement, taxonomies, and ontology of harm. If you are interested, we started cyber vital data in um, initial work and published that on the technical paper that's also um, with the um, area. So uh, please take a look at that. Next slide. Um, the scoring and analysis platform. The most important thing about collecting those data is we like to open data to researchers in industry, academia, nonprofits, and governments to begin testing theories and knowledge sharing. So as uh, Hachama-san mentioned about the centers um, have this, have this um, private partnership um, of the data platform, uh, which you, know, you can share data and knowledge. Um, that's the idea. Uh, next slide, function three, um, data-driven policy design. And this is a great place area is expert areas expertise is the policy design and analysis. So policy recommendations based on robust data and statistics are required, not only for cybersecurity policy, but also for sustainable data transformation, digital transformation development and economic security. Areas building capability to translate the data and statistics for policy recommendations for government officials in the region would be a great value. Next slide. Um, so this is a future phase plan, um, but in order to collect cyber vital data or in other words, population data, we believe it is necessary to create an institutional and systemic data collection mechanism at every national level. Data is the power and foundation of science and every country should have the capability to gather cyber vital statistics, just like every country has certs. This may be a great service at area to provide capability capacity development program to its member states. Uh, but this is, again, um, this function uh, and service is up um, uh, a future plan and um, under the discussion and um, not being um, determined yet. Um, next slide, I'm gonna skip this slide and go to the timeline. 
Cybergreen with the area had started um, this journey. Um, this is the fourth year we started from 2000. Uh, 2000. So um, it's been four years. It's a, it's now it's the phase to share. Um, so the the first phase, if you see this year one um, to four, we have been doing the foundation foundational research. Uh, so this is the time, it's a phase to share our fun, um, foundational research and invite comments and critiques uh, for improvement from the communities. So we start telling stories and um, sharing our um, technical reports and everything um, to the community. Phase four and um, uh, at the year five, we are attempting to um, share the country level scores of this internet public health of the six components. And this is going to be our um, phase four work, phase three work with the area um, starting uh, this April. Next slide. So this is my um, last slide. Um, I would like to um, say to this um, room and, and the people who's on online and participating in virtually, please join us, the initiative to establish science, cyber public health. There are many collaborations and support we'd like to have from the community, such as reviewing and validate metrics, algorithm and method, send us comments and critiques for improvement. Again, all of those technical papers um, we're listing and disclosing um, uh, from CyberGreen's website and AREA's um, website as well. Also, um, there are a lot of work we need to define and unlock the cyber vital data and risk indicators. So please join us for that help design institutional design and mechanism for national and global scale data collection. Help us making the movement from ASEAN to the global um, and other regions. So um, with that, I'd like to say at the last but very important, um, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to Aria Hachama-san and Luron-san uh, for a great, great help sharing the vision and empowering the development. Without their guidance and research, um, guidance and funding, we're not here and cannot get close, closer to um, changing the game. Um, we are miles to go and lots of work requires, but we're very, very thrilled. And um, I would, again, would love you to join this initiative and the journey with us. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.